All right, a lot of people ask about this leverage setup. It's actually multiple leverage setups. So I should go through the basics of the design. I can't give anyone specific measurements because it's gonna depend on the particular rack you have. But uh, the one of the key components is these. In one of my other videos a long time ago, I mentioned these are just called pillow block bearings. A lot of racks that have two inch hole spacings, a one and three quarter inch pillow block bearing happens to have a six inch hole spacing. So it'll fit anywhere you wanna put it on your rack. I don't know what the load rating is on, on these, but it's, I'm assuming, more than any human will ever lift. So, this I call, this I was not using today. This, I call the H frame. I don't know why, it's not really an H. But on one end, you just need some handles. I mean, <laughs> however you want to attach them, be creative. But you need two axes that run through the the long linear parts of the frame. So on on this, I had made one with heavier tubing, and it was too heavy for for me to move around by myself. I believe that's 11 gauge tubing, and it is uh, one and a half by three. And on my rack, these are about six feet long. So if you can see, as I back up, the one axis, or axle, I guess, is about, oh, two-thirds. It's a little over halfway down the length. And you use these set screws to make sure it won't slide sideways in there. This whole thing, I, by myself, one person, you can take it out and you can put that rear axle back there. Right now when it's set up like this, you load weight on the rear axle. That would be to do something like pull downs. If you pull the whole frame off and put the rear axle into the pillow blocks here, then you load the front. These handles become the weight loading pins and these pipes this is one and a quarter inch pipe I think one it might be one inch pipe goes in there I hold it in place with the clevis pin here you could use a nail bolt anything I happen to have the clevis pins on hand but to do Hack squats or shrugs, you load the front. And just trial and error shows you not only at what height to put your pillow blocks, but whether you're gonna mount them to the, to the front of the rack post or to the back or to the back post or even on my rack. I, I drilled some holes when I had this set up as a leg press so that I could mount the pillow blocks on the weight storage support. Sorry about the, uh, the angles here. <laughs> Crawling around. This I had to uh, reinforce. The tubing wasn't quite strong. You can see right here, there's not a lot of material outside of the, the holes I had to cut in that. So I reinforced it with uh, just some angle that I had on hand. Now, the leverage, I was doing cable pull downs on this bar, and on this bar I was able to use three different hand positions without taking uh, any handles off by flipping this around. You can also adjust the width on this. But you follow the cable, it goes across the top of my rack, amongst the spare tubing and so forth. 
And then if you see, see the cable right there coming down, it attaches to the rear of this lever arm. What that does effectively is when, the, when I pull the handle, the cable pulls that arm up like this. And, well, if you could see my whole arm. And the closer to vertical that this arm gets right here, the lighter the weight feels effectively. And that really works well with the strength curve of uh, the pull down movement. Maybe it doesn't bother other people, but for me, it's always bothered me that the to use a weight that feels heavy enough at the start of the movement, it feels way too light at the peak contraction. And this setup evens out the, uh, the relative or the uh, perceived effort throughout the range of motion. This is the same leverage arm I can put a, a pipe in there and I can do the one arm rows that have been seen in my other videos um, I also with the pipe in here I can attach a low uh, pulley row handle and do low pulley rows not it's not a pulley I guess it's a low leverage rows in that case low rows again with the improved strength curve Another look at this. These I actually did not fabricate. I scavenged them off of a, an old T-bar row machine that became, half of it became my calf raise leverage bar. Also, I guess I could mention, I keep an extra pair or two of these pillow blocks because that's, that's what I use as my leg hold down. And it has the advantage that to get underneath it, there's just a little bit of play there. And it's easier to get under. And then once I'm once I'm under it, I can use my legs to push my hips forward up and it really locks me securely in place. Just use my bench to sit on. Just try to show this leverage. You know, a little bit more so those people that keep asking me can uh, get some different angles to look at if you want to try to build one. So uh, again, the, the distance between these two components, the, the frame rails, is approximately two feet. That's going to depend on personal preference, shoulder width, what uh, you know, grip width on your various either pressing or um, shrugging movements, and so forth. Just try to get as many angles of view as possible. Usually, I put a, a single 25 pound plate on the back of that, which, well, as you see that bar is in the way right now, but that tilts the front end of the, of the leverage unit up high enough that it's out of my way and I don't have, actually have to unmount it from the rack to do squats and, and other just basic exercises in the, in the rack. But to do the pull downs, I need it down out of my way. I just let it drop down and it doesn't interfere with anything in the, uh, the cable goes right through the middle of the frame there. Okay, well that's probably way more than anybody needs. Thanks.